Hello, everybody. Welcome. 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 My name is Verda Luz from Divine Timing Coaching. And I'm Jocelyn Mercado from Sacred Planet. And we're so excited to welcome you today. We're going to be sharing with you all about our online conference called Emergence and Empowerment in an Age of Uncertainty. Wow. It's been um, quite the journey. I can't believe how much has happened in the last month. I'm um, in just a few weeks. I, I've just gotten back from uh, Costa Rica just a couple of weeks ago. And wow, the world is changing so much every day. So we're going to share about our online event that is um, our online event is starting on uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, and we have 30 plus speakers that are coming. And then after we talk a little bit about that, we're actually going to get into the full moon because this is a very, very strong full moon. And I want to share with you about the generations that are going to be really hit with this full moon and how it's evolving some of our generational work and what the invitation is for all of us during uh, this really uh, chaotic, powerful, transformative time that we're all going through. So yes. welcome, everyone. Yeah, welcome, everybody. So we have people live on Zoom here, and we are also broadcasting live on Facebook to Veritalus's uh, page. So welcome, everybody. So glad you're joining us here. And I know we have some people who are on who have already registered for the conference, Emergence and Empowerment. So if that's you, we are so excited. We can't wait to begin tomorrow. Um, Verdul and I are both going to do a live interview tomorrow morning, Eastern time. So you'll see emails about how to join that. And if you're not signed up yet, I'm going to put the link in the chat here on Zoom. And we'll add this in the comments on Facebook in a little bit. Um, just to let you sign up, just go here and you can register free at this link. And uh, we have so much amazingness in store for you. So many amazing, powerful interviews and really um, very, very empowering, very inspiring, very catalyzing information to really guide you during these rapidly changing times that we are in. Well, you know, I just, I want to share with everyone the, the, you know, the kind of people that we have on the call. We have coaches, we have healers, we have shamans, we have sacred sexuality experts, uh, we're interviewing um, uh, and talking about topics related to cryptocurrency, to astrology, um, to how we can heal ourselves and the planet at this time. Um, yeah, have many, many business leaders. And, um, you know, we have a podcasting expert. We have um, business leaders in the, in the coaching industry and in uh, transformational and manifesting work. So just really amazing from a wide, wide range of backgrounds and expertise. Yeah. Um, do we want to share now a little bit about how we had intended this, you know, summit and, and then what's yeah. happened, you know, recently? Yeah, definitely. So we have been working together to co-create this summit since November of 2019. We've been working on this for six months and the original title for the event was Awakening Utopia. And, um, you know, the core message is really about how can we use our, our, our leadership, our knowledge, our expertise to create the new and brighter future that we know is possible. And then everything changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and it, it changed really rapidly. And so um, it, it's interesting to consider this, this utopia concept because uh, the word utopia means that means no place actually like a place that doesn't exist like if you break the word down um, but um, we all know it to be a, a place that we would like to live in an Id idyllic or idealistic type of world and here we are now in a world that is completely transforming and it's interesting to consider this um, this full moon and one of its symbols with Pluto being the volcano you know, the volcano is something that um, is extremely destructive, but also very creative. And, you know, it's almost like right now we, we have to we have to clear out um, this this old world, the old paradigms, the old economies, um, the old stratification and, and this sort of volcanic explosion that's really happened on the whole planet right now is going to make way for a kind of new world that we can all birth together. And that we are choosing every every day right now through our vibration. And so in a way like this utopia does seem like it's closer to us now maybe 
than ever, even though it doesn't feel like that, uh, probably for many of us being isolated and things like that, but, but there is a great awakening happening. Um, and, and the beauty of this experience, right, is that we are all recognizing our oneness and our unity, ironically, in these moments of, of more isolation, but there's a greater feeling of empathy between us. There's a greater feeling of connectedness uh, because we all have to adjust our lives and it's a worldwide experience right now. And, and so within this, is there, there is a lot of magic and gold and potential, but um, it requires that we do what we change the title to, which is emerge and empower ourselves and each other to really step out with our gifts and to, um, to move out of the fear vibration into solidarity to move and, and to trust, you know, to not feeling separate, but to feeling like we are connected. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we, so around the middle of March, we were just, you know, sensing into what's going on globally and, and thinking about our, our working title of Awakening Utopia and just realized it just doesn't, it doesn't seem to resonate, right? It doesn't, it seems like we're so far from utopia with all of the, the pandemic that's going on. And so, we changed the name and the new name is Emergence and Empowerment in an Age of Uncertainty from Fear to Trust, from Separation to Solidarity. And it just, it feels so much more um, heartful and connected with where we all are right now. But it's really interesting because our core message is still the same, right? Like, like you were just saying, like through everything that is happening in our world right now, there are portals and opportunities opening us for us to create real change. And it's like there, there is, it, there's this paradox going on, right? Where there's this very immense suffering and grief and pain that people are going through on the one hand, but also I've spoken to people who said, I've been waiting for this my entire life, right? This, this feeling that we actually have an opportunity to change everything. Like the systems and structures we've been saying that, the old way of doing things is going to be breaking down so we can build the new and it's really happening right now. So we have both of these, like, like the, the dark and the light side by side. And it really is our opportunity to shift all of our old patterns, really refocus on what values are truly important to us and, and what do we want to create and how can we step into our leadership in a whole new way and um, really birth that, that new future that we know is available to us. So the core, the core message is still awakening utopia, but just has a different, a different heading now. And we hope you all will join us there. It's going to be so powerful over these next five days. It's from April 8th to the 12th. Yeah. How many interviews do we have a day? Do you, do you know, Jocelyn? Yeah, we have either six or seven a day, depending on the day. We have a total of 32 interviews. Okay, and, and just so everyone knows, it's a free event, so you can sign up right now. Um, you also have the ability, if you want to purchase the whole, um, all of the talks, you have the ability to do that. Uh, you might not be able to be live for everything. We really hope that you can, you know, stay as present as you can throughout the next few days and really tune into all of the wisdom that everyone has come to share. And uh, we start pretty early tomorrow, I think, uh, in terms of the, the U.S., right? Yeah, 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. So I will be doing a live interview at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, and I'm going to share with you about creativity and revolution in your business and your career. Um, and then, Bear Deleuze, you're going to be live at noon Eastern tomorrow. Yeah, and lots of different topics. Um, but but the, the core, one of the core pieces is going to be how to use, um, and, and why it might be important right now, <laughs> to be using uh, astrology and human design and these kinds of tools to help raise our families, our education, and to better communicate with each other. Really, really essential right now. I'm also going to talk um, about some different meditative practices that we can do and some other techniques, uh, shamanic techniques that we can use at this time and, and just why it's important to stay really uh, creative and innovative through the cycles that we're going through. So I'll also speak a little bit to the astrology of right now and, uh, and the opportunities that are, that are in it. Yes. And then we have 30 more amazing interviews after those two. So we will be, so important logistical note is that our two interviews will be live on day one tomorrow. The rest of the interviews are pre-recorded. So after those two live interviews, just keep an eye on your email and you will see instructions for how to access the other ones. We'll release them day by day. And we have just a whole mix of topics from 
you know, one day you might have entrepreneurship and indigenous wisdom and sacred sexuality and other topics all on one day. So it's going to be really quite an incredible journey that we'll be on together. Absolutely. Yeah. So if anyone has any um, questions in the chat or, um, you know, you want to comment on anything, please feel free to do that. Um, I think it might be a good time to, to talk about this full moon. Yeah, definitely. Well, great. I mean, I, I just, I want to stress one, one thing that a lot of us might be realizing at this time. And it's, it's something that you said, Jocelyn, that um, we are really in what we might call a singularity. Um, singularity is a, it's, it's, it's kind of known as like the, the, the moment you, that has no, a point of no return, you know, a, a point that, that changes sort of the fabric of reality in a way. Um, uh, we, we've often thought of the singularity in terms of technology, like thinking about the, the, the birth of AI, for instance, and um, sentient AI, self-aware AI, and like what happens at that point? You know, what happens, what does a human mean at that point? And um, or if, if we encountered uh, a, a, an alien intelligence, you know, alien to this planet, you know, that would definitely be a singularity. It would, it would really change the game. Well, the game is being changed right now. The, the game of, of Earth reality is being changed right now. So um, we have to recognize that in that moment, all kinds of emotions and um, all kinds of energies can be stirring in us. It's like we're, we're in a cauldron, you know, and um, we're stirring it and we're being stirred at the same time. And that's, that's the interesting thing, right? And this full moon is really, really stirring the cauldron for us. So let's, let's break it down a little bit. Um, the full moon today is in uh, 18 degrees of Libra. It's late at night around 1030 Eastern time tonight. And, um, and it's a, a very strong full moon. First of all, um, a Libra full moon by itself is asking each of us to really see each other, witness each other. Um, connect from the heart space. Libra is the sign of relationship, partnership, and collaboration. It's an air sign. Now let's think about what's happening right now with the planets. We have a lot of air sign energy. So we have Saturn in Aquarius just of, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, 10 days ago. Mars in Aquarius right by Saturn. And we also have G Venus in Gemini as of a couple days ago. Lots of air. Now, one thing we, we're learning about the air element, it's very strong, is that the air um, is, you know, the element where transmissions take place. That can be a viral transmission, literally of a pandemic. It's also what goes viral in terms of our communication and our technology and uh, the videos and uh, photos and poetry and writing that we share. So this is a time where we're gonna feel extremely mentally stimulated. Um, there's going to be, um, obviously, all of us are online a lot more. Um, but this, this moon asks us to really balance all of that air element with maintaining a connection with the earth um, and maintaining um, a sense of feeling stable and solid because this moon could make us feel very erratic given that Mars uh, in the sky in early Aquarius is squaring um, Uranus. Uranus is at five degrees of Taurus. And so here's Taurus, here's Uranus. Uranus is trying to reinvent and um, revolutionize our relationship to the earth, to the, the sensual realm. Now, here's one of the interesting experiences we're all having, right? You know, um, Uranus can bring shocks into our life, even a sense of trauma. And right now, this Uranus and Taurus experience and this square really from Saturn and from Mars in Aquarius. Um, Saturn and Mars can be bringing this uh, sense of a trauma around not being able to maybe touch each other, right? Um, if we're long distance from partners or, um, you know, that sense of, of bringing some fear around how close we can be to each other. So the shock, Uranus in Taurus, the, the body element. Now there's also an awakening that can happen with Uranus and with Mars square Uranus during this full moon. And the awakening can be how we can experience the sensual and the body in a different way, in a new way, in a unique way, an experimental way. So we have our online yoga classes, online uh, virtual ecstatic dances happening. 
um, we have a really important invitation right now that if you can, to get out in nature, to get out in the forest, to be with even in your backyard and to be listening to Gaia herself. Taurus is really connected with the spirit of Gaia, the Earth Mother. And I know for me, I'm, I'm very blessed in Asheville, North Carolina, where I live, um, the birds, uh, the biodiversity of birds here and the, the songs are playing all day and chirping all day. And it's, it's, it's sheer absolute beauty for me. And, um, and I, I feel like for, for all of us, that this is a potential right now during this full moon to allow all of the sensual things that we experience um, to be to be great awakenings, right? The, the, fla the fa flower that starts to bloom, the, the tree that might have uh, some white color as before it turns into, into green, that if we can meditate on the beauty and, and, and really um, go to the, the sense of how can we microscope into these little moments, right? If we do have a partner at home that we could touch, like how meaningful is that for us at this point, right? Or our children, holding them close to us, right? Um, listening to music, right? Um, and letting that take you into a meditative state, a contemplative state. Um, this can be really, really powerful right now. And with the, with the air element, one of the best things we can do is, is to write and communicate in very inspiring ways. Uh, I've talked to, about writing letters to, uh, to our family members or to our loved ones who are distant. When was the last time you got a letter from a loved one? You know, um, this is a time you can do that um, with all this air element. It's a time to take new classes that you've always wanted to take uh, online. You know, and expand your your realm. Take them from uh, all these online um, teachers like myself, like many others. You can go to places like Udemy and Skillshare, um, online teacher websites, and you can start to learn anything you want. Um, from the comfort of your own home. So this is a great way to work with this energy, but you have to be, be careful to not let this Mars Uranus get us into a volatile or reactive state. And that's always more potential during a full moon, right? So the other thing that's going on really uh, powerfully, uh, well, before I get to that, one, one other thing to consider is um, our neighbors. You know, Venus and Gemini now, Gemini is the sign of, of the, the close contacts in our neighborhood. And do we know the people that we live next door to? This is the most important time probably of any time in our lives to really start to get connected with those around us and to, you know, to remember our humanity. Um, these are the people you can see on the daily basis, maybe. Um, and you can say hi to, and you can introduce yourself, even if you never have, and you don't have to get super close to them, you know, but it, it means something really different right now. I've been feeling it with my own neighbors. Um, and it, there's just a, a sense of, of uh, the, the connected compassion and empathy that can really open up. And maybe it's an opportunity to, to share, um, you know, about growing gardens together, sharing your resources together, really feeling the power of the local. Uh, because we, we may come to this point where um, we, we don't get to travel in the way we want in the coming months, right? Um, that, that seems to be pretty clear. Um, it may even last into and through the summer. And so how present can we get? How much can we return to this moment? And the other opportunity right now with Jupiter and Pluto conjunct, they're conjunct very, very tight this, this week. Um, there's four, uh, three exact conjunction, conjunctions in the next few months, this week being one of them. Jupiter expands um, our ability to access the underworld and the unconscious. I mean, he's actually giving us some inspiration and a stronger sense of faith about going into those darker places, which we must do right now. This is a time where we can unveil the, um, the, the shadow material that we might have pushed away. There's no opportunity now to push it away. The opportunity is to go into it, right? All the things we've taken for granted. Um, and I think that all of the, the, the future orientation our world has been so built on that, uh, that uh, I, I know myself too, I've been really meditating on this a lot, like how much I live into the future. And what this gives to us as a gift to come into the present. But sometimes in order to really access the medicine of the present, we have to go into the past or into the unconscious, into what we don't really 
no has really determined a lot of our actions. And so this is actually a great time for esoteric studies, for occult studies, for studying the most powerfully transform transformational material um, and um, conscious material that you can. So, you know, yoga, uh, Qigong, um, you know, Taoism, Buddhism, uh, Tantra, um, astrology, human design, all of these things that allow us to access the core patterns in our soul. Um, doing breath work practices can be really, really powerful, especially during this full moon. I'm speaking to things like Wim Hof breathing or shamanic types of breath work, you know, very connected. You know, Kriya yoga, Kundalini yoga, um, to move this energy through us. Dance again being really important um, as a cathartic practice as well. So cathartic healing, um, breath work, shamanic work, being really, really powerful right now. So uh, Jupiter, Pluto, this is, um, this is something to really look at. And I want to leave you with one other invitation. Um, you know, as one of your spiritual practices right now, it's, it's being able to work with your relationships in a different way, in a unique experimental way, whether partners are close to you in proximity and you can, you can actually be with them, whether you're living with them all the time now, or whether they're at a distance, this is a very unique opportunity with Gemini, Venus, and Mars, Aquarius, air signs, right? Technological signs, experimental signs, very open, very um, innovative in terms of relationship. And so we, we really want to look at new ways of connecting. If we're around a partner all the time, um, can you make a meal for each other? Can you massage each other? Um, can you, you know, turn what could be come kind of intense, right? If you're always around somebody, um, and maybe you're not used to that because you go to work or you have some separation, but the same thing with your kids, you have to get very creative in how you relate, right? And you have to also build new ways of compassionately communicating. I would highly recommend the study of nonviolent communication to, to everyone at this time because it's a really um, palatable language for relating to each other in a very compassionate and loving ways, you know? And if you are at a distance, how can you get very creative with, um, you know, reading poetry to each other through Zoom, right? Or again, sending letters or getting kind of sexy with your energy on, on the video, you know, or, or leaving a sexy call to your partner, you know, like, like you maybe did when you were 16, you know, like flirting at a distance. Um, there's all these different ways that love uh, can express itself and we're being invited to really do that at this time, so. That's what I want to share about this, this full moon. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much um, for, for everything you shared there. It's super powerful. And um, yeah, I, this, you know, all that you shared about like the, these inner practices that we can do and, and the breath work, so many, so many options and so many opportunities there. I know you're going to speak about more tomorrow, but mm -hmm. we are all on this, spiritual retreat right now right we're all on whether we wanted to be on a retreat or not we're sitting in our homes and we're really contemplating like the bigger mysteries of life and death and we're really being forced to look at our values and our habits and patterns and all that makes up our lives so super powerful time to be doing the inner work and also um allowing that inner work guide us to how we can move into leadership how we can move into mastery in different areas of our lives so you're all going to learn so much about all of these during our, our interviews throughout the week there's some beautiful questions here from lisa in the chat and lisa we're going to close soon so we won't have time to get deeply into these but i want to honor your questions here they're really really um super potent and relevant to what this whole conference is going to be about so you're asking about creativity's role in reinventing the world i love that way of expressing that and that is so much what i'm going to be talking about tomorrow at 10 a.m eastern so definitely join my talk then and i love what you're sharing here about your your role to help other thought leaders trust and release of conditioning and surrender to the field of all possibility and yes intuition and imagination as our inner gps so thank you lisa um, you're gonna be able to expand on all of this so much with uh, with all of the interviews you'll be hearing soon um, I want to share with everybody before we close here, just 
the amazing um, interviews that you can expect on tomorrow, on uh, on Wednesday, after the two live interviews that we're gonna give that we just spoke about. So check this out. We have um, Keone Hanale is gonna speak about emotional safety in the energy centers. This is such a powerful interview. He carries very profound um, ancient Hawaiian wisdom and you don't wanna miss this one. And then we have Malada Gebermedin she is speaking about Gaia's era of great mother planetary di dissolution, our sovereignty and the crumbling of patriarchal colonization. Really, Malada is, is such an amazing speaker, so inspiring. And then on the business side, we have Michael Neely. Um, he is an expert in podcasting. Our calling is to share our message and our duty is to do it effectively. So that is coming up tomorrow. And also Danielle Rama Hoffman, um, an incredible transformational channeling interview here on the new paradigm leader mm -hmm. so you don't want to miss any of these um, so I will put the link in the chat again if you're not signed up you can do so here and if you're already signed up just look out for the emails uh, and click the link to the event schedule page as you have seen in previous emails and you'll be able to access all these amazing interviews um, yeah anything else in closing that you're thinking we should share here no i just i just really um want to you know acknowledge everyone for their courage at this time and um when that, you know whatever's coming up to to keep coming back to the breath you know keep keep coming back to just slowing into the gratitude in the breath and and to recognize that in every moment you're being breathed you know you don't you don't have to do anything you don't have to fix anything and you are also being given your breath from the great source. Something is breathing through you. Or the source of love is breathing through you. And, and all you have to do is continue to emanate that, that source of love. And that's a beautiful feeling when we can just stop and, and recognize that, wow, this, I am being breathed right now. I don't have to do that, you know? And I am uh, I'm being held in, in source right now. And, and to remind each other of that, you know, as we, um, we, we, need to, we need to be careful around how much information we're taking in and what kind of information right now with all this air energy and, and to come back to, to being here right now, like what's right before me? What do I have to do today in this moment? And to stay centered. Yes, love it, love it. And um, yeah, well, everybody is, um, putting comments and, and greetings and blessings in the chat. So thank you all so much for your beautiful comments. And we are sending so much love to all of you. Can't wait to see you all live tomorrow and all throughout the conference as we gather in global community for the awakening of consciousness and, and opening to entirely new possibilities for our world. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Lots of love, everybody.